Hi, it's Miss Saul. I have a book to share with you today and it's one of my favorites. And I didn't realize um, until I went looking for the copyright that this book is 80 years old, that it was written in 1940. So this story has been around, the book has been around for a very long time. And I love to act it out. And when I'm reading in front of the classroom, the boys and girls um, do the motions with me. So feel free when I'm reading to go ahead and act it out with me. So I need to tell you a little bit about caps for sale. First of all, um, we don't really call them caps. We call them hats. And if you look at the front cover, these are the caps lined up. And I want you to see what's kind of strange about this cover. Normally, would you take a nap up in a tree like that? Look at him. That is very strange to me. What is he doing? Why is he up there? And then I'm looking down here and I see two little monkeys and I think, hmm, what do caps and monkeys have to do? How do they fit together? I also need to give you a little bit of background. Back 80 years ago when the book was written, they had peddlers that went through the towns and the villages and they would walk and try to sell their wares, they would call them. And this peddler who would be, we would call them like a salesperson now, he was selling his hats. But maybe I was a peddler that would sell fruits, like I would have some apples and oranges with me. And another peddler might sell some vegetables like lettuce and carrots or something like that. So that's important to know because they talk about the peddler. So this is the peddler or what we would call a salesman. So Caps for Sale by Esper Soblanca. Once upon a time, there was a peddler who sold caps. He was not like your ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back he carried them on top of his head. First, he had on his own check cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, and then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top were a bunch of red caps. He would walk slowly up and down the streets, holding himself very straight as not to upset his caps. And as he walked along, he would call, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up and down the streets and up and down the streets calling, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody even wanted a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he didn't have any money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, he said. And he walked out of town slowly, slowly, as not to upset his caps. Now we wouldn't say upset his caps. What do you think that means, that he was walking very straight as not to upset his caps? Because if you upset someone, we might think that we're making them sad or angry. It's not making them sad or angry. It means that they wouldn't fall. He walked for a very long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, he thought. And he sat down ever so slowly underneath the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put his hand to feel the fifth A were all straight. First his own check cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and then the red caps at the very top. They were all there, so he went to sleep. And he slept for a long time. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. 
but before standing, he felt with his hand to make sure that his caps were all in the right place. All he felt was his checked cap. Now, what in the world do you think happened to those caps? He's sitting out in the country. What could have happened? Predict. Think to yourself, hmm, I wonder what could have happened. And make a smart guess, which is a prediction. Do you have it? Okay, let's see. He looked to the right of him, no caps. He looked to the left of him, no caps. He looked behind the tree, no caps. He looked in back of him, no caps. Then he looked up into the tree and what do you think he saw? This is where your prediction, you're gonna see if you're right. On every branch sat a monkey and on every monkey was a gray or a brown or a blue or a red cap. The peddlers looked at the mo monkeys and the monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do, so finally he spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking his finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys shook their fingers at him and said, tss, 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 tss. This made the peddler angry. So he shook his hands at them and he said, you monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their hands back at him and went, tss, 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 tss. Now he felt quite angry. So he stomped his foot and he said, you monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and went Okay, I want you to be the monkey with me on this page. By the time the peddler I'm sorry, by this time, the peddler was really very, very angry and he stamped both his feet and he shouted, you monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped both of their feet back at him and went At last, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap and he threw it to the ground. And then he began to walk away. Now, this is another great time for you to predict. What do you think the monkeys are gonna do now? Do you have it? You can turn the page and see. But then, each monkey pulled off his cap. And all the gray caps and brown caps and blue caps and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. So the peddler picked up all of his caps and he put them back on his head, first his own check cap, then all the gray caps, then all of the brown caps, then the blue caps, and then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly, he walked back to town calling, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. The end. I really like this book because I like what the monkeys say and do and I like to act it out and I like to call the 50 cents a cap. I hope that you enjoyed Caps for Sale as much as I do. I have to say though, reading it without all of the boys and girls here, with all, without all of you, it just wasn't as much fun reading it in an empty living room. So, I miss you and I hope that you're doing well and hopefully I will be able to read to you in person. I'll see all of you hopefully very soon. Bye.